on, look at somebody next to you and say, you look good today. Find somebody else, say, you look so good today. I'm so glad you made it today. We are so honored and overjoyed this morning to worship Jesus. And one of the things that we, um, we want to do you know, I just feel like I'm supposed to share this. I felt I, I shared part of this with my worship team this morning. I feel like the Lord challenged me this week, and he said, why do you do the things that you do? Do you just do them because you feel like you're supposed to or because that's what needs to happen? Or are you doing it because it's all about me, right? When we worship, we don't clap because that's just what you do in church. We clap because we're making a joyful noise to the Lord, right? We don't lift our hands because the whole row is lifting their hands. We lift our hands because we want to honor Jesus today. And so in everything we do today, I don't want you to worry about anybody else, but where is your heart and your motive to worship Jesus? Because when we come genuine to the throne of God, it says he inhabits the praise of his people. Praise is a genuine something that comes from your heart. It's not a fake hallelujah. It's not a fake clap. It's not a look at me. It's a genuine lifting of the name of Jesus today. So we're going to do that today. Lord, we just, first of all, we enter in with thanksgiving this morning. <laughs> I'm so thankful that we are here today. I'm so thankful that we can meet in a room together, that we get to come and worship you, and we don't have to do it just over uh, phones or streaming. We have that blessing, but we can also meet in a room and seek you. I'm so thankful today that there are people who chose to come today to worship Jesus because we are hungry and we are thirsty for the things of God. And I pray that in this whole service, Lord, we just ask that you would come and move. Holy Spirit, right now, we just ask that you would open up the very portals of heaven today and that we could worship with the angels, that we can begin to come into agreement with the promises that you say and that we will feel a genuine connection in our relationship with you today. God, to you be all the glory and all the honor and praise. In Jesus' name, will you just say amen if you mean it today? Come on. church. You know, as a family, we can go on and on about today's culture, right? But do you know that we are supposed to create culture? 
We are supposed to give forgiveness because we were forgiven. We are supposed to walk in, in godliness because he calls us righteous. And we don't back down from trials because he moves mountains. Amen? Amen. So let us praise the God that the angels are already singing about. Can we join them in heaven this morning? Yeah.
worship you this morning. Father, we thank you that we are not afraid to worship you today. I'm not afraid and I'm not fearful, but I'm moving in faith this morning because my God will do all the things that he said that he would do today. And through God, all things are possible today. And it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it feels like today. Father, you can have 100% of us. We just, we just surrender this morning and say, God, you can have my heart. You can have my dreams. You can have my life today. Lord, I came this morning with no reservations but to seek your face. So, Father, I pray that you would just be glorified as we worship you today.
first found you to the moment when we heard the call that said there's a God that loves you and we ran to the altar we ran just to you Jesus you are the altar and we said God I receive I receive the love of my creator today I receive the love of a God who sees the best in me when everybody else sees the worst I receive love today even though I'm not maybe the best at it God I receive your love today yes. I just want you for a minute just keep, just close your eyes if you're not already I want you to just go back to that moment when you said yes to Jesus come on just even if you were little I just want you to say Holy Spirit take me back to that moment when I first said yes to you Remember what it felt like when your heart started pounding? Maybe there was someone on the stage giving an altar call, or maybe you just heard a song, or maybe you just hit rock bottom and people had told you about him and you had that moment <laughs> when you just realized you needed him. I pray that we will never forget that moment that we said yes. The moment that things shifted and our eternity changed. <laughs> That moment that we didn't have to be perfect anymore because God was enough for us. Lord, we just let that settle in our hearts today. If we ever get too far away from those moments, Lord, let us just go back and remember where it all started. When it all began, when we realized that we needed you, Jesus. Let our flame not burn out, but only get stronger and bigger and hotter and wider let us begin to really love you in the way that you've intended let us not only receive your love but reciprocate it today god you are so great and so wonderful and so good oh lord this morning we just we feel your love in this room today i feel your love in this house today even on the live stream, the, the love of Jesus is flowing today. Because you're enough and he cares for you and he sees you and he desires that relationship with you today. So God, will you just pour out your love on your people? We just saturate right now, just with your Holy Spirit, we just saturate hearts. We captivate minds this morning. Will you just begin to rejuvenate and encourage bodies today with your love?
on, just begin to tell him in your own words today why he's great. Come on, just begin to just tell him, Lord, thank you for what you've done in my family. Thank you that you've taken us from where we were to where we are. Come on, just right now in your own words, will you just encounter the presence of God and just tell him why he's great? Will you just be specific and thank him for me? didn't live in the same city or have the same relationships or even make the same choices. We're, we're very different people. But it's like I felt the Lord show me a picture of standing with her and he says, when I see you and Tina, I just see my daughters. I don't see the choices or the perfections or the imperfections or the personality or the looks. I see my daughters. Sometimes in the world, we want to look at things and say, well, if I could be more like her, or I could be more like them, or if I could look like this, then I would be enough. And God says, you already are enough because you're my son and you're my daughter. And when I see you, I see you with eyes of love. You see yourself with eyes of criticism. You see yourself with eyes of comparison. You see yourself wanting to be something that you're not. And God says this morning, will you just stand and say, I'm a son and a daughter. In God's eyes, we're equal. In God's eyes, we can stand on the stage together and say we are both going to the same place for eternity. And it doesn't matter what led us here. What matters is that we're here standing today, amen? So I just, if you're not weird about germs, if you are, that's okay. I just want you to find somebody next to you and grab a hand. It's okay if you're not into that. You can say bump elbows or whatever, you know, hold, touch, get close maybe. Jesus, today, I feel like you're resetting us to see ourselves the way that you do. You do not see age and you do not see gender and you do not even see the things that are sometimes so important to us and our appearance. You see us as your creation, as your son and as your daughter today. And Lord, the people who are standing next to us or that we're joining hands with, Father, your love is equal for us. And this morning, we may not all be on the same page, but we serve the same God and are part of the same family today. So Father, we just come against condemnation. We come against shame this morning. I come against the spirit of comparison today. I even come against bitterness that would try to remind people of their past and bring things up that you've already forgiven. And I pray today in the name of Jesus that you would help us to be examples to other people of what your love looks like. <laughs> It can't just be me's and it can't just be Tina's. We have to all represent as the body of Christ today. And I thank you that when we stand in your eyes, you see us as your creation. You see the goodness of God living on the inside of us today. 
And Jesus, I just thank you that strength is coming, that peace is coming. I even thank you that confidence is coming as we stand because you are a faithful God who loves his sons and his daughters. So Lord, we just receive, just say that. Say, God, I receive your love today. God, I receive your love. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, we're gonna, as a body, we're gonna take a few minutes and appreciate our pastors, uh, all they all they do for us and who they are in Christ. We're gonna have a couple people share, and then after service, if you want to come up and thank them for everything that they've done for you, that that'll be the time to do that. But uh, I want to start off by reading some things that I wrote down for them. Pastor Gary, I appreciate you for the way you love people. I've never met someone that loves people the way you do. Even in correction and instruction, your love is always breaking through. I appreciate you for your obedience and always doing exactly what Holy Spirit leads you to do. I love you, Pastor, not by feeling, but by choice. And I choose to imitate you as it is so clear that you imitate Jesus. Pastor Kalina, I appreciate you for the way you keep it real and for your transparency about yourself and things you have gone through. You put it all out there and that takes courage. Your faith is always on display. You know who your God is. Because of your boldness, I appreciate you and I will imitate you as it is undeniable that you imitate Jesus. Pastor Rudy, I appreciate you for your honesty and for your worship, sir. It's amazing the way you cut loose for the Lord. I know, I know he smiles and says, look at my son go. It takes courage and boldness, and I appreciate you for taking a tough position as a youth pastor. May God give you every tool you need to impact the lives of the most precious ones we have and the ones that are in your care. And I will imitate you as you imitate Christ Jesus. Beats wants to say something too. Good morning, church. So most of you know me. Um, my name is Rudy, but most people call me Beats. So most of you know me by that. Um, I've been coming to this church for two years now, so I'm still fairly new. But man, those two years went by fast, right? So, um, man, all of you up here, you guys have many, many gifts. And the one gift that stands out to me is you are all master encouragers. I struggled with unworthiness and just lack of confidence, um, especially behind the drum set, believe it or not. Uh, I got a late start on the drums at the age of 21 and I'm 34 now, so I have some time in, but most people start when they're younger, and I just struggled so much with that, and when I started playing here, just all of you have poured into me just so much. Over these two years, I felt like I have grown leaps and bounds more so than any other time in my life, so I just appreciate you guys for all of your encouragement and just giving me a chance to come and worship with you guys, so I've grown so much as a believer and a worshiper and a minstrel and I can't thank you guys enough so thank you good morning well Mark told me that I, I was not allowed to talk very long so <laughs> that's right I'm telling you he's in control but I wanted to just share a little bit with all three of you because I've been in ministry for many years, many, many years, in many different ministries, and I served in another church for 30, 35 years, but when I came into this house, when my wife and I came into this house, I recognized how you desire so much to love the Lord and to be in His presence, and we receive 
receive what they gave, what they give, even as you witnessed this morning, where they took us into the presence of God and their hearts. <laughs> I refer to my brother here. To me, he's the weeping pastor. He just loves the Lord so much. We're golfing. We're out, out on a tee, in a tee box, and we start sharing. And we get done, and pastor says, i got to wipe my eyes first before I hit the ball. I can't see it. He says, tears are rolling and flowing, and Rudy, with your excitement and your joy, jumping for the Lord and singing, you are, oh, you just touch my heart so much and how you just love the Lord with all your heart, with all your being. And Kalina, as Mark said, you're so real. You bring it so, so much from your heart and your desire to see us come into his presence. And not only that, but I, I go back to the sermon you did several weeks ago where you said about filling the holes, the small holes in the boat to make us realize that we have to come along and ride with you and oh, you're just oh, you're just oh, so much I love you amen God bless aren't they great hallelujah hallelujah pastor yes as one body uh, let's let's stand please and let's pray for our pastors Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come together as one body right now, coming to honor and give thanks for our pastors, Father. They are so real and they love so well, Father, and we are thankful for everything that they do in our lives, Father. We're thankful that for their obedience, Father, and for these reasons, we ask that you cover them, Father. Cover them from the tops of their heads to the soles of their feet, Father. We thank you that you're taking care of every need for them, physically, mentally, financially, and just throughout the day, Father, we thank you that, that they're protected wherever they go, Father. They're safe and secure. They're in your hands, Father. We just continue to thank you for them. And we just thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. I, I know everything that goes on in this church. And they're like, I want to talk. I was like, did you get permission? <laughs> Mark tells me, I talked to your mom. I said, okay, Pastor G, that's good. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor G. <laughs> but we are, we are blessed. I didn't even realize today is Pastor Appreciation Day. And so thank you. We, this is the truth. We love that we get to be your pastors. You know, some people, pastoring is just a job or a paycheck, but to us, pastoring is our life, and we love that we get to do life with you, amen? We wouldn't even have anybody to pastor if it wasn't for y'all, so thank you for showing up and, and being so awesome, and um, oh yeah, I got lots of time. I'm going to do some announcements in just a second, but I do want to share a couple things. Um, oh, I think I stuck on the other side. Um, before you go back, Pastor Rudy, I just want to say something. You could stay back there. I just want you to know how much I appreciate you, too. Pastor Rudy's one of my bestest friends in the whole world. But I want you to understand something. Sometimes you see people up here and you think, oh, they're just on the stage because they are. But you don't know the seasons they've had to plant to even get to where they are. I think I met Rudy 13 plus years ago. And when he first came into church, he was not sure about church, but God just transformed his heart. But one of the things I love so much about you, Pastor Rudy, is that when you commit to something, you're just all in. And I feel like you've come so far so quickly because you've just told God you can have it all, you know? There were years, I'm talking years, where he would help with his wife run youth ministry where every Sunday after church, they would come at five o'clock and do food and games and worship for like two and a half hours with the kids every Sunday night for like five years. And that was completely on a volunteer basis. Like I'm just here to see people grow and I think, I think that sometimes people see you and they see your age and they see that you're fun and they see that you have a great personality, but they don't see the sacrifices that you've made. But I just want you to know that we do. 
We appreciate you when you come up and you speak or you share or you're a part of our team. It's an honor to do life with someone who's never really asked for things, but just said, how can I serve? A couple weeks ago, I made a comment that I was short elementary teachers and he's the youth pastor and teaches all the time. And he comes to me and he said, Clint, if you need me to teach the kids, I can teach the kids. That's what it means to have a servant's heart. I just want you to know that we appreciate you here and that you're valuable to us. And thank you for sticking with us for so long. We hope that you'll stay a lot longer. (laughs) We love you. And to Pastor Gary, who I love more than life itself, I have so many things I could tell you today. And I didn't even know I was going to get to. One of the things I just really want to thank you for as being my pastor is that you lead by example, Dad. You've never preached a message to me that you didn't live. And I can attribute not just my giftings and what God has done in me, but the woman that I am today because you've instilled that into me. Because you saw the good in me. You saw the things when I didn't see them, when I was so scared to preach that first time. And you were like, the whole time I was at the back, like dying. (laughs) I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. My dad said, even if you can just give me 15 minutes, I'll take it. (laughs) And he literally like pumped me up like my biggest cheerleader did. And because of that, I saw something that I knew that God wanted to do in me. And the biggest thing is that you've been the man in my life for a long time you've been a good daddy and because you've been a good daddy I didn't have to look for that in other people or other men I think a lot of the reason why I stand today so confident and independent and patient is because I had a good daddy who loved me well and I wasn't trying to fill a gap because it was already full and today I honor you it is a joy and a delight to serve in this ministry you know Pastor Gary he does a little bit of everything He plays the keyboard. (laughs) He also hooks up all the cameras. He comes at like 6 a.m. every Sunday morning. There's nothing that he's ever been too big or too good to do. And I just want you to know today that we as a church, we love you. And we are so grateful for your heart and your ministry. Thank you for letting us be a part of this thing that you've been able to create. And to my mom who's watching on live stream, we love you too, Pastor Gina. I know you're not here today, but you will always have a place and you will always be honored. We would not be sitting here today if you not, had not held strong and continued to do what God asked you guys to do many years ago. So we love you today and we bless you as well. Amen. All right, well, I need a minute to wipe my face. So we're going to stand and greet someone for a second. If you just got to church, it's a good time. We're going to make some room and some chairs. Will you stand and just greet one another? And we're going to dismiss all of our junior high and our high schoolers to make their way to the back as well. Hallelujah. We are so grateful to be in the house of Jesus this morning. We're going to pray and we're going to just jump into the word this morning. I get the honor to preach to you today and I love being able to talk in the house of the Lord. So I hope that you came hungry and thirsty today and we're just going to press into Jesus. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for awesome sheep who just surprised us and blessed us. Lord, we're so grateful and man, we are just so in awe of your goodness. Thank you that you see the best in us, Lord. We're so thankful for that today. And Lord, I pray that you would just move in this message today. Every time that we share, Lord, I want it to be a word of encouragement and hope and also a challenge to help us grow. So I pray today that you would help us to do all of those things and that through your Holy Spirit, you would just open up this message to bring new life to us from the inside out, Lord, that we would just feel the Spirit of God moving and you would bring new life into us. And we will give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Will you just say amen? Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to preach to you this morning for just a few minutes. Do you have a few minutes today? And I feel that the Lord is just stirring some stuff. I love how the Holy Spirit works. The other day I was 
I was talking to some other women in ministry and just uh, some topics came up that we began to discuss. And it was so cool because I had already previously prepared my message and out of their mouths began to come some of the very things that I had already written down the day before. And I love when the Holy Spirit just goes, see, like you're on target. This is what I'm saying, right? And you know, you want to prove stuff. So I'm like, girl, I just wrote that in my notes yesterday. Like I don't have my computer, but I wish I could show you, you know? But the thing is, is God has a word this morning and my title of my message is new traditions say new traditions I feel like I have been encouraged by the Holy Spirit that we pray this Lord let your new wine come right like your new the new thing that you're doing but how many know that you cannot put new wine in old wineskins that when you want to have a new something there has to be a new carrier to hold that and so I believe that this morning God is going to equip us as the church to begin to be that new container for what he's getting ready to pour out amen we cannot do it the way that the years and years and years before us have done it. It doesn't mean anything was wrong before I went through some good years. Hallelujah. Come on, where are my shout to the Lord, Darlene Check people in the house? You know, you remember that one? Like, shout to the Lord. Everybody had wow, and you listened to over and over, right? There's nothing wrong with that, right? But God is doing a new thing. And so I'm not against shout to the Lord, but we're doing a new shout, you know? And God is beginning to change things. And so a part of change is saying, Holy Spirit, I may have been serving you 40 years, but how do I need to be equipped today to continue to do what you want me to do? Come on. Not this is how we've always done it. This is how I've always handled it. This is how it always looks. But God, what are you doing? Amen. See, God doesn't change, but when you get to know him, it gets better and better and better because he reveals more more and more and more of him. Amen. And so I was kind of talking to the Lord this week just about traditions. And it was so interesting. The Holy Spirit said, well, let's just look at the Pharisees in the Bible for a minute. If you don't know much about the Pharisees in the Bible, they were Jewish leaders. Um, They were basically a group of people that were supposed to enforce um, the religious law. They were like the the people who kind of went, hey, the scripture says you can't do that kind of a thing. Now, if you read in the Bible, the Pharisees were not talked about in like super excited terms, right? Most of the time, Jesus was like, calm down killer you know what I mean like Jesus would do a miracle and they would be like you're not supposed to do that on the Sabbath and then Jesus would throw them some like does the word not say and they would get all tripped up mad and hop out you know but they were these religious group that they had always done things a certain way And they were so stuck in the rule and the law and the way that things were done that even when the Messiah himself came, they couldn't get out of the box to realize that he trumped all the stuff, right? Like I remember one time he said basically like, you can't do this, it's the Sabbath. And Jesus was basically like, I'm the savior, I trump the Sabbath. Like, like, do you not understand you're trying to honor me with these rules and it is me, I am the rule, right? So like, if you're worried about it, like, I'm good, you know? But they just were so stuck in this place. And so I wanna read some text this morning. And we're going to look a little bit about the Pharisees. So if you have your Bible, let's open up to Matthew chapter 23. We're going to read about 13 verses, so it's going to be worth it for you to turn to it. I always love that in church when they go, turn to John 7, 12. And it's like, and the Lord said he will bless you. And you're like, I turned for that. You could have just, (laughs) you could have just said that. (laughs) I'm going to give you some text today. It's going to be worth it. Amen. New Testament, Matthew chapter 23. Are we there, church? Hallelujah. Here we go. We're going to start at verse one. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees are the official interpreters of the scriptures. So they practice and obey what they say to you. So practice and obey what they say to you, but don't follow their example for they don't practice what they teach. Ouch. Verse four. They crush you with impossible religious demands and never lift a finger to help ease the burden. Everything they do is for show, and on their arms they wear extra wide prayer boxes and scripture verses inside, and they wear extra long tassels on their robes. Verse 6. And how they love to sit at the head of the table and banquets and in the most prominent seats in the synagogue. Come on, we all know people like that at church. (laughs) You sit in their seat and you look like you just sinned. Verse 7. They enjoy the attention they get on the streets and they enjoy being called a rabbi. 
But don't ever let anyone call you rabbi, for you only have one teacher. And all of you, come on, we preach this this morning, are on the same level as brothers and sisters. Amen? Amen. Number nine, and don't address anyone here on earth as father, for only God in heaven is your spiritual father. And do not let anyone call you master, for there is only one master, the Messiah. The greatest among you must be a servant. But those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Verse 13, how terrible it will be for you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites. For you won't let others enter the kingdom of heaven, and you won't go in yourself. Can we just pull our toes back for just a minute? I mean, I don't know about you, but Jesus came for them. He was like, you teach the law, but you don't live it. (laughs) You quote that scripture, but I have never seen you walk it out. (laughs) You have a nice fancy robe and the Jesus sticker on your van, but you don't act like you serve him when you're in the grocery store. Come on. He was basically saying, you, they do all the stuff to appear, but it's not real, right? He was telling them, you know the principles. Look, I I love when people want to... I, this is, I'm going to give you a little insight into being a pastor. Um, when people get around you, they turn into like holier than thou mode. <laughs> I, we joke about it with my friends. We'll, they'll introduce me to a family member and they go, Pastor Galena, John 316, for God so love. I'm like, I don't need you to quote the verse. I know the verse, right? <laughs> but it's funny how when you get around certain people, you change to try to do something that appeals to them. And God said, I, I don't need you to do that. I need you to be it. If you know Jesus came and died and forgave you of your sin, then act like it. You don't need to quote it because you ain't even living it. Come on. And so sometimes we act like the Pharisees. We say, oh, I know the word of God, but you got a root of bitterness so deep in your heart. (laughs) Thanksgiving is tough because everyone is walking on eggshells that you're going to bite someone's head off. And God says, come on, you ain't living it. Let's get it together. You can put on the best show ever, but you could still be fake. I love, love, love church. I love watching other ministers preach. I listen to so many podcasts during the week. But sometimes I see stuff and I go, that's funny. You preached a really good sermon on Sunday, but your Instagram reflected something completely different. Wow. That, I mean, you said it in a way I've never heard it before. But you posted some stuff that was crazy and hateful and mean. Come on. We have to begin to not just see it, but to live it. Amen. One of the biggest things that Jesus said about the Pharisees is he said, they show no love. They know the traditions. Now, remember, he said, do not call anyone else your father because only I'm your heavenly father. He said, they know the traditions, and they're so stuck in the traditions of their fathers that they won't submit to the new traditions of their heavenly father. Come on, some of y'all missed that. They're so stuck in the tradition of their earthly fathers. This is how it has always been done, that now that their heavenly father is here, they won't submit to the new traditions of their heavenly father. This morning, I do not want to be like a Pharisee. I don't want to be that person that is cold and cutthroat and makes people feel like if you don't look like me and dress like me and talk like me and go to my church, you're not in my group. That is not of Jesus. He says, I want you to live the way that I've asked you to live. We must follow in suits. I want to read you Matthew 7, 21 through 23. It's what comes after. I'm going to paraphrase this. Jesus says, many will say, Lord, Lord, will I enter the kingdom of heaven? Did we not prophesy and cast out demons in your name? And he will reply. You ready? I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Now, I don't know about you, but that's like Jesus, like, I don't know who you think you are, but you have not been serving me. (laughs) There are times in this season where it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to be in the struggle. It's okay to be working in it. But some of us have stayed there for too long. And God is saying, this is a new season today. And just because that's how it's always been done, I need you to step into the new season and embrace what's happening. Come on, when COVID happened, there were a lot of people that were very uncomfortable to go on live stream. Like, uh, let's be honest, don't raise your hand, but I taught a lot of people in this church how to get on Zoom. And one of my greatest joys was when people went, I have no clue how that works, but I'm game. I remember, I hope you don't mind, I remember Linda Carter She's so young. She's one of our youngest church members. And I remember talking to Linda, and I said, we're going to have a women's Bible study on the computer on Zoom. And she was like, as long as you show me how to do it. (laughs) 
you know? And I was, I remember thinking, okay, and we walked her through every step. Guess what? Not only did she show up at the Bible studies, but she shared at one of the Bible studies because this is the thing. Sometimes the, the container looks different because we have to move with what God is doing, right? And so there's no training for live stream and, and Zoom on the fly. You just have to go, Holy Spirit, this is what you're doing. This is how we continue to do it. And I may not feel comfortable, but I am moving with where you're going because I'm not going to be stuck in an old tradition just because I'm comfortable doing it. Amen. There is a new tradition as that's coming, but just like there's new traditions, I believe that it's to begin to walk as Jesus did and to love people better. Can I get an amen? Amen. It said in that scripture that if you humble yourself, that's the way to enter as a servant. This morning, I want you to know Jesus is your savior, but I also want you to know him as your liberator. I want you to know that not only did he die for you, but the things that are holding you back and keeping you stuck, he can free you from today so that you can move forward. You may go, you know, some of this new stuff and the Holy Spirit times and the worship, it's a lot. And God says, I want to free you from that mindset because that's not of me. You may have not seen that in the past, but behold, I am doing a new thing today. And he wants you to walk in that. Another thing that sometimes holds us back is a, a false sense of shame. We feel that everybody doesn't see us or accept us because we're different. Let me tell you something. The differences are what make us the best. Amen. If you look like me and there was just like a whole bunch of seas of Kalina, that would be so weird. (laughs) But this morning I look out and I see diversity. I see different cultures. I see different ages. I see different genders. And to me, that's what the body of Christ is supposed to look like. Come on, John 6, 37 says it this way. Everyone who the Father has given me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will never turn away, which means everybody is welcomed in the name of Jesus. If you come to Jesus, you're welcomed. If you walk in the door, there's a seat for you. Come on. We're supposed to be carriers of the presence of God. We've had so many words even recently that in this next season of what God is doing, it will not look the same way church has always looked. And that gets me excited (laughs) because I don't want to just see church folk always in the building. I want to see people that are hungry for Jesus and, and they may have a, a, you know, rainbow mohawk, but you know, let's just worship Jesus together because I don't know about you, but he died for the rainbow mohawks just as he died for you and your cute little comb over. He is the one who's come to say, everybody has a spot at my table but we do this but that's not what church has looked like and he said yeah and it's not going to look like it that anymore because this is why if the church stays the same way the same people will always be in the box and the same people will be outside of the box but what did God say during COVID it's time for the church to get out of the building and to begin to be the church that doesn't have walls. It doesn't mean we can't meet together, but God is trying to call together people so they can see what love looks like. Come on, how would you ever choose Jesus if you didn't actually get to feel his love? If it was all the law and all scriptures, can you imagine you walked into church and like, you want Jesus? Here's a list of 10 things you have to do. You'd be like, heck no, that's a cult. You know, like that would be weird. (laughs) And some people are like that. If you do all of these things, then the Lord will accept you. I just want to go, guess what? You're already accepted by Jesus. I know you're a little weird. We love weird. We're weird too. I know you're a little different. I know that we're trying to work on some things, but guess what? I'm trying to work on things too. So so just come and worship with me. Come on. And when we come into that place, then that's where Jesus can show people his love. But when you sit in your seat, and, and, and even though maybe you've been welcomed into the building, you don't feel welcomed by the people, people feel awkward. They feel shame. They go, oh, people are probably staring at me, and I don't, I don't look like everyone else. We have to not only be acceptors, but we have to be carriers of that acceptance of Jesus. When you see somebody you don't know, walk up and say, hi, my name is so-and-so. I'm so glad you came to church today. Not, oh, I don't know who that is. Did you see them? You're, t- you're in the back telling everybody, did you see the Mohawk kid in the row too? <laughs> Yeah, I did. His name is Jerry, you know, or whatever. I went up and said hi today. Come on, that's what the church is supposed to be. We're supposed to be carriers of his presence. So we're going to talk just for a few minutes today about some of the traditions in church that need to change. Can we do that? I feel all my young adults getting excited today. They're like, finally, give it to them, Pastor Glenn. The number one, which we've already kind of hit, not everybody is going to look the same way. But let me give you some scripture. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, come all, 
capital A, capital L, capital L, come all who are weary and I will give you rest. Not come the perfect, come the put together, come all all. Amen. When you begin to say, God, I don't want to limit people. I want to allow people to come into your presence. That's when things are going to be kind of change. Number two, not, oh, I'm going to get you on this one. You ready? Not everyone is going to agree with you, but we are not a cult and we do not cancel people. I'm going to break that down for some of you who are like, what does cancel mean? Is that like a delete on the computer? We have this culture right now that says, if you're not on my page, we're not in the same book. If you don't vote for who I voted for, we can't be friends. If you don't see things the way that I see them, I'm sorry, but you're not in my circle. That is not kingdom culture. One of the biggest attacks of the enemy during the pandemic was not COVID. It was bringing a, a place where people were no longer unified and were hating each other and were negative and were divided. Come on, in the beginning, it was black versus white. And then it became Republican versus Democrat. And then it became mass versus no mass. And now we're vaccinated versus unvaccinated. I don't care, just come to Jesus. At the end of the day, you have a right to make a choice. And, and the enemy will always do this. Well, you need to find out who's on your side so you can be in your own group. No, that's what a cult does. A cult says my way or the highway. The only way I'm following is Jesus. Now, if you're doing something that is not line up with the word of God, I'm still going to love you, but I'm going to speak my truth. <laughs> But we cannot allow for the enemy to bring separation. And the old church used to say, if you don't feel exactly the way that I feel about every single item, we can't do church together. And the enemies went, winning. I found another reason why you don't feel close to those people. You know what, what, what really boggles my mind? is that we can come to church and we can sing songs like, God, I just want to know your love and make your love known. And then we're so nasty to people in our conversations. We're so mean in the way that we say things. We find out someone else is vaccinated and I, or, or you're vaccinated and someone else isn't and you come out like a thunderball. And God's like, were you not just singing at church? <laughs> how much you love the father and how much he loves you come on we have to get into a concept where it's okay to share your opinions but if you don't agree with mine that's okay i will not allow the enemy to win in relationships and in division i will not allow him to put anger in my heart because i see things differently and there's going to be times that we're going to disagree guess what pastor and i disagree sometimes we've had some heated conversations during the pandemic because we don't always think exactly the same, but it doesn't matter. There's literally been times where I'm, he's gonna laugh because we do this all the time. I go, agree to disagree. Now, foundationally, we believe on the word of God and that's what we preach. We don't stray from that. But there's times that we just can't 100% get on the same page on things, but I don't love him any less because he is his own person. And God is working with him and Jesus, and God is working with me and Jesus. And so I have to decide what's right for Kalina, and he has to decide what's right for Pastor Gary. It is not my job to get him into my clique to think and believe everything that I believe. And the enemy has come for the church this year. I've literally heard people go, I can't go to my church too much because they're just, they're just too much about this or they're just too much about that. And it's like, you know what? It comes down to the same Jesus that we serve. You may not always see it. This is, I've been telling people this. Somebody just needs to hear this this morning. When you don't know what to say, just don't say anything at all. When someone comes up to you and go, well, I feel this way and I could give you 10 reasons I looked up on the internet to prove it. <laughs> and you're like, oh yeah, I don't have 10 reasons. I just think this way, <laughs> right? You speak your truth and then you just don't say anything else. If, 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 it's, if it's just in that place where you go, you know, I don't know, but this is just how I feel and that's between me and God. God bless you, sister. Let's come on. Let's go to lunch. Come on. We begin to begin to have unity. Can you imagine how mad the enemy would get when he would realize that his ploy is not working any longer? But he shifts it. Come on. I just told you like four or five different things that it changed. Come on. What's going to be next month? There'll be a new something. Are you on this team or this team? I'm, about, I'm on Jesus' team, and we all look a little different. We all don't see the same, but we are serving Jesus together and honoring the word of God. If you don't allow the enemy's ploys to work, then that's when we win. Yes. Yes. 
I'm going to try to explain something to you, and I might mess it up, but I'm going to try because it's Jesus. I was talking to a woman yesterday, and she she does, it's, it's kind of weird, she does like these bull riding contests where you get on a horse and they go through this maze and the, the, the goal is to corner the bull where you can like get them, I guess is the best way to say it, like, to, you know, to grab them. And so she said it's in, you know, back in Spain, it's like a hunt. They actually get on the horses and they go through this thing and you have to chase. And the goal is for the, this big black bull not to gore you <laughs> and for you to get the bull first, right? And so she said, they don't do that here in the States because really realistically when you get the bull you kill it and that's very inhumane and so she said we do like kind of pretend ones <laughs> where they have like these pretend pretend mechanical bulls and so you go through these obstacles and you have to use tactics to get it now listen to this she's talking to me and I'm thinking this is kind of different that you do that for fun but okay and um, she's like this little rodeo girl I loved it though I was like so I was so intrigued right and she's like but this is the catch Kalina and I'm like okay she's like in the real world when they do this in Spain she said every time that they catch the bull they always kill it and I was like why that's so mean and she said because after the bu the bull has realized what tactics you use to get them they're smart enough if you try it again, they will get you. So it's a one time only. And I sat there and I thought, how many times does the enemy come for us like that? And if we would begin to have wisdom like those bulls that go, ha ha, I remember how you came for me in 2021. You come at me again, I'm gonna get you this time. Come on. That we wouldn't be like seven, eight times again that the enemy is getting us with the same tactics and the same ploy. Come on, we need to be like those black bulls. Like, now nah, you ain't playing with me today. I know you go left and go right and you swoop right there. I'm gonna get you this time because we begin to grow spiritually so that we can move forward. Matthew 7 12. This is my favorite. I love this verse. It is our golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. AKA be nice. <laughs> be nice. I think the one of the best fruits of the spirits is kindness. When you love people and you treat people, not just because that's what you want, but because we're showing them Jesus. Amen? All right. Ah, whew, I'm getting excited and I'm sweating up here for Jesus. <laughs> Number three. Here we go. This is the third thing that I believe that we need to change in our traditions. We need to stop idolizing what the world says is success. Last time I checked, we need to take off the pressures of what is a st stereotypical norm, and we need to allow for godly kingdom to just take its place. Amen? How many times do we see success as you're married and you have four kids and you have a white picket fence and you have a nice Range Rover and you make six figures a year and you coach your kids softball team and you've won dad of the year twice. Come on, we set this goal. Some of you are like, you just described me, Pastor Kalina. <laughs> AJ, I, I could feel it, I could feel it. No, I'm just kidding. He got five kids. He's like, you know, I'm above, I got five kids. But the world describes success as that. That's the picture we have in our minds. And as a church, we have actually adapted the world's context of what success looks like. So we go to people and we go, oh, you're not married? Oh, I'm gonna pray for you. Oh, you guys don't have kids and you've been married for five years? I'm gonna pray for you. What are we doing? We're actually putting a stereotype of success on people instead of saying, oh, God hasn't allowed that to happen? Look at you, boo, doing good. Oh, look at that. You're, oh, you're on your own, but you still driving the SUV? Good for you. God must be working in your life. Come on. We put things in boxes because we think that that's what success looks like. And God says success looks different. You want to know what success is? It's obedience. You could have all the things I just mentioned and not be serving Jesus and you are not successful in the kingdom of God. He's like, you go to heaven's gates and you're like, look at my kids, look at my SUV, look at my bank account. And he said, I've been looking at your heart the whole time and it has not been right. Success is not measured by fitting in a box of society. It's measured by honoring Jesus. You know, come on to all the single people in the house. There is a new season of just learning to be you and to take the pressures off of what society wants for you. 
Now, I'm not against relationships. I think they're of Jesus and are awesome. But when you begin to see that you are not successful because of a relationship status or a child or a job or a vehicle or a title, but just because you're walking in the obedience of Jesus, it's freeing. It's so freeing when you just go, guess what? I'm enough. So when people come up to me and go, oh, you're single. I'm praying for you. I go, I'm praying for you too. I'm praying for you to just take off those little lenses that you looking at me and your little judginess right there. I'm just going to pray that you're going to just take off those glasses right there and just see the truth that I'm good. <laughs> because when we begin to see success the way the world does, we become like the world. And what does the Bible says? You can be in it, but not of it. Don't see things the way that he does. You may be divorced this morning. You may be going through a rough patch in your relationship, but it's not that you are unsuccessful if you're walking in obedience to Jesus. You could be in the worst place of your life, and God says, I'm looking at your heart, not at your financial or marital or job status. I could be at Taco Bell, single, and just serving Jesus, and he's like, that's my girl. He's not worried about the stuff. He's worried about my heart, amen? And we have to begin to not only preach that, but we need to show that because there are people in the back. There are kids in the back who watch us. They go, well, my mom says that one day we're gonna, we're gonna level up. We're just gonna have the vacation home and we're gonna have this and that's what success looks like. Instead of going, guess what? My mom and dad say that we're already successful. That like, we're, we're killing it for Jesus right now. Come on. But when we verbalize things like, well, one day when I have this, it'll be enough. Our kids see that we don't think that we're enough where we're at. And the church has to be the image of Christ. And the image of Christ does not fit in a box. You may be in some of those places today, but we are not all the same. Amen? And we all need to be in the place that God has called us to be. It's not about your followers on Instagram. It's not even about what you look like. It's about being like Jesus. Amen? Amen. I heard someone say this the other day. They said, I'm going to fly my flag, and I'm going to let you fly yours, <laughs> which means I love you, but I am different than you. Amen? And when we do that, we begin to see people. I want to summarize 1 Kings 2, chapter 3. It says, if you listen to God and you obey his commands, you will prosper wherever you go, which means if I want to be successful, all I have to do is honor Jesus. All I have to do is serve him. And the things that you desire will still come. But the success is already there today before it has even happened. Amen? Amen. All right, number four. We need to love people the way that Jesus did and not like the Pharisees. See, the Bible says that Jesus is infinite, which means there's no end, which means he does not max out on his love. Jesus doesn't have a punch card and go, the first hundred people who make it to me get to receive, right? He has infinite love. And one of the biggest lies of the enemy is that if you're a train wreck, God does not have love for you. And I want you to know something. God loves people who had a train wreck because he's the savior and liberator of our lives. Amen? He's not looking for perfect little people who have it all together because we wouldn't need him. <laughs> But when he sees you and goes, wow, you a wreck. Come on, let's see what we can do together. Yeah. Like, I know how to come in. I've, I've heard this before. God will come in and wreck your life, and in a good way. Yeah. Like, you may feel like a wreck, but he's going to come in and turn some things around so that you can see the way that he sees you. Amen? Some of my favorite, I mean favorite people who teach the word today are like so not people that you would expect. And they did not have all the, the schooling and even some of the stuff that most people had. They are real people who went through some real life and got really close to Jesus and are now sharing what God has done in their life. And there's something that transforms. Like one of the, that was such a beautiful compliment. Thank you, Mark, about saying like, you love my realness. I don't ever want to get up here and go, I have it all together. I never have meltdowns. No, I want to be 100% honest to go, hey, this is where I'm at. Because when you're real with people, people will receive from you. If you stand up here and you put on the facade like, I have it all together and my life is just bringing glory to the heavens. People are like, she weird. <laughs> I've seen people like that. We're like, you cool, but I would not hang out with you outside of church. You know, like, that's different. <laughs> but when you say things like, oh, this lady, I told the, the youth kids last week about the story about how I was in the post office and the lady cut me off in front of me and I was looking at her and I just thought about like tapping the back of her knee, like, you know. <laughs> And I said, I had to pray through that. They ate it up. One of the kids is like, you should have just done it. You could have repented. 
actually one of the one of the kids said she probably deserved it and i was like no she did not deserve it so we talked about how we don't know what kind of day they were having and it wasn't right for me but i'm not gonna walk back there and be like someone cut me off and i just prayed to the lord to bless her that's fake like no i thought five times if i hit her on the left because usually people are right dominant you know <laughs> if i just tap the left i could just be like oh excuse me like you know, and I would have felt vindicated, like, you cut in front of me in the post office, like, no. But if we're not real with people, people will not relate to us. I sin too. That's why I need Jesus. We don't have it all together, but guess what? We can do it together, amen? amen. I'm almost done. I love the, the book of Song of Solomon. Some of you are like, ooh, I bet you do. No, let me explain something to you. <laughs> Song of Solomon is, is a beautiful illustration of love. But I think that one of my favorite women preachers, um, Lisa Harper, she wrote a book on Song of Solomon. And she said that she's a, she's a 55-year-old single woman who's adopted a little girl from Haiti. And she's just serving Jesus. She's fantastic. And she said, you know, I always used to skip over the book of Song of Solomon because she'd be like, I don't have a boo. That's weird, you know. And she said, one day I realized everything that's been written has still been inspired by the Lord. And everything that's expressed is still an expression of love. And where does love come from? It comes from Jesus. And she said the Lord took her through the book of Song of Solomon. And every time they would talk about adoring or loving, she targeted that as if Jesus was speaking to her. And, and I, I, I heard this in one of her messages. She said there's a, there's a part in Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 7. It says, at one glance of your eyes, you captured my heart. And she said, every time I read that, I think of Jesus speaking directly to me. The minute that I saw you, you captured my heart. Not the minute you were perfect, the minute you had it all together. He said, the minute that I saw you, my creation, you captured my heart. You made, you made me feel that I wanted to love you. That's what Jesus says to us today, that he sees you far beyond the way that other people see you. And sometimes our biggest downfall is that we don't see ourselves the way that God does. Um, one of the biggest things that I do, and you know this well if you've ever come to me for counseling, is when people are struggling with insecurity, I will give them homework. And I'll say, you're going to go home and I want you to write down five things that you love about yourself and five things you would like to change. Now, you all know in this room that when people come back, they have got five things they don't like. And they usually have like two on the good list, right? And we have to kind of like dig to pull out like, okay, let's think of some other things, right? Because the truth is, is we don't always see ourselves the way that he does. You know, I, I'm not against, um, I'm not against confidence. I just, I think that what it is, is that people think that confidence is cockiness. And so if I walk in the room and someone goes, you're beautiful. And I go, I know that doesn't come across well, you know, I went, <laughs> Can you imagine? You're like, tell me about it. Look at my creator. You know, <laughs> that would be such a good line, right? It's almost like, you looking good. I know Jesus did good. No. But when someone says something to you, <laughs> we're supposed to receive that, right? There's nothing wrong with going, thank you. You know what we usually do as women? Oh, thanks, my hair was a mess today, and I, I tried a new shampoo, and it's just, and we actually start pointing out all of our flaws. And, you know, I think some of the dudes are like, can you just say thank you? Like, <laughs> am I right, men? Am I right? I'm going to preach to the women that are here for a minute. If they're admiring you and encouraging you, just say thank you. There's nothing wrong with going, thank you. That, I appreciate that. Because what it is is it's you receiving love. And sometimes we don't even know how to give love because we don't know how to receive love from Jesus or from other people. And so when people give you compliments, you deflect because, oh, I don't know. How is the world going to see love if we can't show it? One of the biggest things we do, you know this well, when we see people that we love, we go, friend. It's a thing that we do. And we'll go, friend. And we we'll usually see someone and go, oh, you look so cute today. As women, we try to be encouragers, but we're really bad at receiving it for ourselves. Why? Because the world, this is another tradition that I think that God is reshaping. The world has taught us that if we're not the Proverbs 31 woman, then we're not enough. Wow. Wanna know something cool that I heard this week? I heard this. They said the Proverbs 31 is a Hebrew hyperbole. Let me explain that. It was a compilation of different Jewish women who had amazing traits. And if you put them all together, 
that's what she would look like, that we would work towards. Ain't none of you a compilation of everybody. (laughs) So God wasn't saying, if you don't have all of these things, you have not achieved it. He's saying, this is a compilation of different women that if we put all of the best of them together, this is what she would look like. We strive to be like her, but you cannot be her 100%. Because I was not made. Come on, there's even a part that says her children will see her and bless her. You might be single and be like, well, I guess I'm not a Proverbs 31 woman. No, that part doesn't apply to you. But instead of striving to go, well, I'm only 5 out of 10, God says, you are 100 out of 100. And it's not wrong for us to say this is something we aspire to be like, but it wasn't one person. It was a compl- It would be like God saying, I'm going to take all the women in the room and pull out the best traits, and we're going to call her Sally. We're all going to strive to be Sally. None of us can really be Sally 100% of the time, but we can learn from Sally, amen? We can glean from Sally. We can go, wow, those are some things that I would like to grow in. But when we take off that cap of trying to be something that we can't be and just aspire to be like Jesus, then there's peace that comes, amen? I'm going to close with this. When we read the Bible, we see the Pharisees in a state where Jesus is constantly like, what are you doing? Why are you acting like that? If you read scripture all the time, Jesus is like, can you just stop? You know, back in the day, he had his own terms, but like if he was here today, he would probably like post them on his Instagram story and be like, they tripping again. You know, like that's, that's how it would be. (laughs) But their biggest downfall wasn't that they didn't know the word. It was that they didn't really love people like Jesus and they weren't walking out the word. They were holding up a standard that nobody could meet instead of saying, hey, we're all on the same page today and I'm just here to to, to remind you like this is what God wants for you. One of the biggest traditions that God wants to change today is that we can love people well and not love people like a Pharisee. I may be a pastor, but I don't need you to get holier than thou when you come around me. I just want you to be you. It's so funny. People will get around me and they'll accidentally cuss and they'll go, I'm so sorry, Lord, forgive me. I'm so sorry. Like, it's okay. I'm not going to die. I've heard a cuss word before. We good, you know? It's all right. Because there's not a judgmental bone in my body. You, you probably used to cuss all day long. I praise God that we're down to like a few, you know? Hallelujah. Praise God. We're getting there. Hallelujah. But we have to be the light. And when people feel the love of Jesus, that's what's going to transform today. I want you to stand to your feet. We're going to just pray and ask the Lord for some new traditions, not just in our lives and in the church, but in our families, so that we can begin to see the way that he does. Father, everything that we've learned is from you. You've inspired us by your words in the Bible, and now you teach us by the leading of your Holy Spirit. And I thank you that in the word of God, we have all that we need. The principles are there, the foundations, the beliefs, those do not change. But the way that we live things out and the way that we carry your love and the way that we treat people, there has to be some adjustments for this new season. You are getting ready to pour out some new wine on your church. We feel it. It's like there's such a stirring, Lord. But I thank you that we would be those new wineskins, that we would allow ourselves maybe even to be a little different or to try some things out of the box or to make a friend that usually wouldn't be in our circle or to include someone or ask someone out to lunch after church that maybe we don't really even know really well so we can get to know them better. Father, I pray that we would be Jesus to people. And as we get into this new place of posture with you, you're going to pour out some love on us so that we can show it to the world. I thank you today that you would help us and equip us to have all the tools that we need. This world is going through some really difficult times. And the truth is, Lord, is that there's not a book to explain all the things and how to figure it out. But every day we will ask your Holy Spirit for wisdom and guidance. Every single day we will trust you and submit to you and ask you to lead us. And by your grace and your mercy, you will give us all that we need. 
So, Father, we just thank you today. I praise you that even today after service, let us be carriers of your love. Let us encourage one another. I pray for all the women in the house that you would help us to receive love better, (laughs) help us to receive compliments better, and to just begin to see ourselves the way that you do. I pray over the men of this house that you would help them to continue to lead well, Father, that there would always be a sense of right order and appropriateness, but there would be uh, encouragement and there would be life that comes out of their mouth and that they would bless their children and their family and those around them and lift one another up. And we thank you today that we will follow as you lead. In Jesus' name, amen.